Hi, my name is Dean Suzuki, and I'm a senior solution architect with AWS. And my role is to help customers run Microsoft solutions on AWS. And today we'll be covering the topic of running Exchange email on AWS. So a common question I get when talking to customers is, is it possible to run Exchange on AWS? And the answer is yes. And so today we're gonna to cover the three common approaches I see to deploying or running Exchange in AWS. And I'm gonna kind of list them out here. And we're gonna drill into each of these next. So the first is extending your AD in Exchange to AWS. For this example, I'm gonna uh, use a fictitious company, example.com. And let's say example.com has their Active Directory forces named corp.example.com. And they have an on-premises data center, you know, which runs Active Directory domain controllers and exchange servers. And you can extrapolate this to your environment. And so let's say they wanna move uh, their exchange to AWS. So the first step is to establish network connectivity with the AWS cloud. And typically I see this in, in two mechanisms. The first is either using a VPN connection over the internet to connect their on-premises data center to the AWS cloud. And the second is called Direct Connect. And for enterprise workloads uh, such as the Exchange, I'd recommend the Direct Connect approach. And with Direct Connect, basically the AWS data centers become kind of like a node on your network. We're establishing on the back end with your MPLS, MPLS provider a connection between your network and our network. So as part of the key, uh, and we have, uh, we're not gonna drill into Direct Connect uh, in this video too deeply, but we do have other videos that cover that. But as part of this process, I think the main thing I wanna highlight as well is that uh, as part of this process, you wanna plan out your IP subnetting and addressing strategy, such that the IP subnets that exist in the AWS cloud are unique and different from the ones that exist on premises so that packets can route between both locations appropriately. We wanna be able to route if, uh, network packets between the AWS cloud and on the on-premises data center. So after doing uh, establishing that network connectivity, we want to establish a hybrid DNS architecture. And one of my colleagues is actually uh, producing a video on this topic as well, so we're not going to drill too deeply into that. But suffice it to say, what we want to do here is that we want uh, resources either on premises or in the AWS cloud to be able to issue DNS requests and be able to resolve resources on either side. And this is the next step is really establishing the hybrid DNS architecture. And once you establish that, we can start to begin to extend, uh, set up domain controllers in the AWS cloud. So you'd set up a couple of servers uh, in the AWS cloud for high availability, and we call those EC2 instances, and then you would promote them to be Active Directory domain controllers. And you would promote these to be Active Directory domain controllers in your existing on-premises forest. So we're basically extending your AD forest out to the AWS cloud. Now these domain controllers can be part of the same domain as the on-premises force or maybe a, su a separate subdomain. Uh, most of our customers typically go with the same domain so it's, it minimizes the, the amount of hardware that's needed. But uh, by doing that, now you have your Active Directory Cloud extended to the AWS Cloud. Now as part of this process, I want to highlight that make sure to also create the appropriate Active Directory sites, subnets, and site link objects in your Active Directory so that you know, these domain controllers, since they are in a different subnet than your on-premises domain controllers, we want to make sure that the, there's a pro, uh, separate AD site created for them and that the Active Directory is, is physically aware of where these things are and that they're separated from your on-premises Active Directory sites area. So once you do that, now we're going to go ahead and install Exchange. So we're going to set up a couple more servers and then install Microsoft Exchange on them. And it's at this point that a lot of our customers actually think about upgrading their Exchange servers to a new version. So as part of this process of moving their Exchange to the cloud, they're actually upgrading their Exchange servers to a newer version. And as part of that, you probably need to perform the appropriate in Exchange force prep, domain prep operations prior to installing. But once you do that, now you have Exchange in the cloud. And since we've extended your Active Directory force to the cloud, these Exchange servers can be part of the same Exchange organization as your on-premises Exchange servers. And then the next step is, you know, once you establish the appropriate mail routing and namespace planning to allow email connectivity from the internet, you can then begin your mailbox migration. And you can start with just maybe some test mailbox servers and just follow the same process that you would typically use on premises if you're you know, upgrading Exchange to a newer version. And Microsoft has extensive documentation on how to do that. 
So anyway, this in a nutshell is the probably the most common approach as we see to running Exchange in the AWS Cloud where you're extending your Active Directory Forest to the cloud and then extending your, uh, your Exchange organization to the cloud and then just moving the mailboxes over to the new Exchange servers. The next architecture option we want to look at is leveraging Amazon WorkMail. And again, we're going to start from the same position as we started in the prior example with our customer uh, with corp.example.com with their on-premises AD Forest running Exchange. In this case, we're going to extend the connection out to the AWS cloud. We're going to establish the network connectivity, the hybrid DNS resolution. And I'm going to skip those since we kind of covered it in the prior steps, but you do those here. And then the next step is you'd set up the Active Directory Connector. And the Active Directory Connector is an AWS managed service, which allows basically kind of, you can think of as a proxy type of connection for resources that exist in AWS cloud to connect to your on-premises Active Directory domain controllers. So we're going to set up the Active Directory Connector. And after that, we're going to set up Amazon Week WorkMail. And what Amazon WorkMail is, is an exchange compatible email service that we provide that allows customers to run email in the AWS cloud and we manage the email service for them. But it's exchange compatible, meaning that you can run Outlook against it. It's not running exchange servers, but we're running it uh, in an exchange compatible format. So once you do that, then you can begin uh, your mailbox migration of moving your mailboxes to Amazon WorkMail. So this is another option uh, using one of the managed services, Amazon WorkMail. The next uh, option I want to cover is for customers who do not have any exchange or AD on-premises, and they want to provide their users and email services. Uh, and it, maybe this might fit the scenario of a startup an enterprise or a government organization who's just starting out and don't, doesn't have email. So, you know, to run AD in the cloud, you could actually send up uh, virtual machines running Active Directory, or you could take advantage of a service called AWS Managed AD. And what AWS Managed AD is, is that managed Active Directory services that AWS provides, where we stand up two Microsoft Active Directory domain controllers and manage them for you. So in this example, we're setting up a managed AD for corp.example.com, and then we're gonna use the managed email service, WorkMail. So now you'll have basically an exchange compatible email service running in the cloud, where you can create users and they can still continue to use Outlook uh, for their email client. So let's make it real. Uh, I wanted to give you guys an opportunity to get hands-on experience with running Exchange in AWS. So we had, uh, have created something called an AWS Quick Start. So to get to this, you would open your browser and search for AWS uh, Quick Start Exchange. And if you, uh, one of the options that could should come up is this AWS Quick Start. If you click on it, you should see a link or a page that looks similar to this. And this is our Quick Start page. And what an AWS Quick Start is, we created something called a cloud formation template that really easily quick start, uh, builds out uh, an architecture in this case, uh, an architecture either running Exchange 2013 or 2016 in the AWS environment so you can get hands-on experience with it. And we provide a deployment guide here. So if you click that link, it'll walk you through step-by-step -step on how to do this. And now in order to do this quick start, you'll, you would need an AWS uh, account to do this. And some of the resources it creates go beyond three tiers. So there will be a slight charge for running this infrastructure. And it really depends on how long you run it, but I uh, wanted to highlight that. But the documentation, documentation points that out as well. So by running through that quick start, what will happen is cloud formation will create the following resources in the AWS environment. It'll use uh, two, it'll create these resources into an AWS region. An AWS region is really a, a grouping of data centers that we have, and we have right now 22 regions and growing all the time. And these data centers are grouped into clusters called availability zones. And these availability zones are separated by distance such that they're all on different fault zones. So if something happened to one availability zone, uh, the uh, data centers in the other availability zone would still be online. Uh, I do want to caveat that you know our regions, uh, some other providers consider a region a single data center. Our regions consist of multiple data centers, and uh, each of those uh, multiple groupings, we group those data centers into availability zones. So you're getting multiple layers of redundancy to provide higher availability to your applications. So in this case, you know, our best practice is always to separate your applications into at least two app availability zones. So you see here, we've put in a, we placed a domain controller in each availability zone and, and an exchange node in each availability zone. And this, these exchange servers are configured into an exchange database availability group. 
and we're using a file server as a form of as a third witness to, to the quorum arbitration. We're also leveraging our best practice of separating private resources, internal resources from the internet by creating private subnets. And we have these public subnets where we've created something called an RD gateway. Think of it as a jump box to get into the environment. So anyway, this is what the quick start would create uh, for you so you can get hands-on experience and the documentation deployment guide goes through how to set this up. Here are some additional links for more information. You know, this is a link to the quick start, the first one. If you wanted uh, additional information on running Exchange in AWS, that's what the second link is. We, if you wanted inform more information on uh, Amazon Workmail, which is our Exchange compatible email service, it's, uh, I put that link as well, as well as to, uh, links to our managed AD and AD connector. And with that, I wanted to thank you all for attending and hope to see you at in the future, maybe at reInvent. Thanks. Thank you.